You might have seen ray tracers that run in Excel, in Minecraft or on a calculator. In this video we will look at how this works and we will set up our own 3D ray tracer in Blender. Ok, let's start with an example. Let's say you wanted to draw a picture of this plant here. One way to do this very easily is to hold a piece of glass in front of you and then you just draw what you see through the glass. So what you're doing is you look from your eye through the glass and you then draw whatever you see behind it. And this is very similar to how a ray tracer creates an image. So our screen is made up of pixels. So we have a grid here. And if we want to know the color of a pixel, we shoot a ray from our camera origin through that pixel. And then we look what's behind it. And then we color the pixel with the same color of the object we hit. And if we do this for all pixels on the screen, we get a final image. Now we understand the concept of how a ray tracer works. But a computer has no idea what ray tracing is, so we have to translate this concept into something the computer can understand. So we have to create some kind of mathematical formula or function. So what should be the output of this function? Well, we only care about one pixel at a time. So what we want to know is what is the color of that pixel. And in our case, let's say we only want to get the brightness of that pixel. And the brightness is only one number, so if we get back zero, the pixel is black. And if the function returns one, the pixel is white. That's the most simple type of display. But now the problem is that we always get back the same number. So this function should output different values for different parts of the image. So we need some way to tell this function which pixel we want to calculate. One way we could do this is by giving it the pixel coordinates. So how far to the right the pixel is from the center and how far towards the top. The center is zero, zero. And then we just feed these coordinates into our function. So this function can calculate the entire image. We give it the pixel coordinates and it will calculate the brightness at this position on the screen. Now it's time to start Blender. So let's delete the light source and the cube. Then we add a plane and this will be our screen plane. The center is at zero, zero and we have the positive x-axis and the positive y-axis here. Now let's open the shader editor and here we can give the plane a new material. And we should also switch to the material preview mode up here. And now here in the shader editor, we can build the same function that we talked about before. We have our output here. So let's add a value node. And this is just one number. So if we display this, at zero it's black. And if we raise this value, it gets brighter. So when we plug in a number here, it will get displayed as brightness. So this socket is the output. And to get the input, to get the pixel coordinates, we have to place a geometry node. And here we have the position vector. So based on this, we can calculate the brightness and display it then on our screen. Okay, next we want to generate a ray. So a ray has a starting point. Let's call this our ray origin. And it has a direction, our ray direction. Our ray origin has three coordinates, x, y, z. And our ray direction vector also has three coordinates. So in Blender, let's add two combined x, y, z nodes. What this node does is it combines three numbers into one vector. The blue dot just means that there are three numbers in it. The first one is the ray origin. These are basically the 3D coordinates of the camera. So the position in 3D space. And we can change them later to move around. And the second one is our ray direction. We can leave this for now at zero. So our camera is just in the center of the coordinate system. Okay, so this is our screen in 3D space. And let's say that this here is our ray origin. And now we want to construct a vector that goes from the ray origin to a pixel. Let's say our pixel is here. So we shoot a ray in the direction of the pixel. So all we need now is to get the coordinates of this vector here. We already know the x and y coordinates. They are just the x and y coordinates of the pixel on our screen. And the set coordinate is this length here. And we haven't specified this yet, so let's just say this is one, one unit. Okay, back in Blender, now we want to 
get the x and y coordinates of our pixel position. So we can use a separate xyz node and then we split our vector into its three components. So x is x and y is y. And as we said, our set value is one. So what's very important is that we normalize our vector. Normalizing just means that we scale it to have the length one. And if we know for sure that our vector is of length one, we can scale it, for example, by 3.5. Then we can be sure that we traveled 3.5 units along the vector. And set it to normalize. Okay, now we have generated our array. We have a starting point and a direction vector. Now what we want to do with this vector, we want to intersect it with some geometry. The most simple one is just a sphere. So now we want to test if this vector intersects a sphere or not. If we hit the sphere, like in this case, we will make the pixel white. And if we don't hit it, we will leave it black. To make this easier, we can just look at this in 2D. So we have a sphere with a certain radius. And here is our camera origin. And we shoot a ray. And now we want to test if this ray intersects the sphere or not. We only need to test how close the ray comes to the sphere. So the closest point is always perpendicular. And now we only need to test if this distance here is greater than the radius. If it is, then the ray doesn't intersect the sphere. And if it's smaller, like if the ray is here, this distance is smaller than the radius, so we certainly have an intersection point. For this part, we need to know a bit about vector mathematics. I explained this in one of my last videos, so you might want to check this out. So this is our ray origin. Then we have our ray direction vector. And we want to figure out this length here of this part. So the idea is we first get this vector here from the ray origin to the center of the sphere. Then we project this vector onto the ray direction vector to get this length here. After that, we start at array origin, we travel along the ray by this length, and we reach this point here. And then we just calculate the distance between this point and the center. Okay, so back in Blender, let's create a new combined XYZ node. And this will be the position of the sphere, so the center of the sphere. So we can move the sphere around. Let's move this a bit forward. To get the vector from the ray origin, to the center of the sphere, we use a vector mass node and we subtract the starting point from the end point. Now we want to project this vector onto the ray direction. So we use the dot product. We project this vector onto our ray direction and this gives us the length. Now to travel along the ray, we start at the ray origin. We move in the direction of the ray direction, but we scale this vector by the length that we just calculated. So this here is the closest point on the ray to the sphere. And now we only need to get the distance between this point and the sphere's center. And now we can use a math node to do a comparison, set it to less than, let's say we have a radius of one unit. And let's move the sphere closer. We already see the sphere. Let's group all this into one node. So we have this as an input, the ray origin and the ray direction and the radius. Okay, now it's a lot easier to control the position and the radius. And if you want to add more spheres, you can just add the results together. Okay, so here I have eight spheres and we can now move back and forth, up and down and left and right. If you want to change your field of view, you can change the distance between the camera origin and the screen plane. So now we zoom in and if we move back, we have a very different field of view. You might also notice that if you move forward, if the 
spheres are behind you, they also show up. To fix this, we can add a mass node here and set it to maximum and zero. So now we only see the spheres if they are in front of us.